I'd like to greet the beloved church, the peace of the Lord, give continuity to the message that the Lord has revealed for this month, which is to speak about the trumpet. Who was here last Sunday on the Sunday school and heard the teacher speaking about the first trumpet? So I want the children to make the lessons to help me to go through quickly what was spoken about the first trumpet, just so that you can remember. Let's go back to the slides. This is the uh, uh, school of October, first trumpet. So the first trumpet, we found out what was the first trumpet. John saw, that, that's it. But what was the first trumpet? You just heard about this Sunday. Who remembers what happened? Let's not be timid. Say, Manu, what happened? <laughs> what happened when the first trumpet sounded? What happened with the forest? With everything that was green on planet Earth? John was imprisoned. Right, but now I'm talking about the trumpet, the forest, yes. John saw that when the angel, the first angel, sounded the first trumpet, you know what happened with the forest? The green is going away. So it caught fire, exactly. So this is just uh, a remembering of, because we're going to speak about the first trumpet, the first trumpet was Sunday. Today we're going to learn about the second and third trumpet. So we're going to see what is in the word of the Lord. So let's let's stand up in reverence to the word of the Lord. The test is located in Revelations 8 from 8 to 11. Let's all read together with me. Let's go. And the second angel sounded the trumpet, and the third part of the creatures died that had life in the seas, and was lost the third part of the ships. And the third angel sounded his trumpet, and the third part of the waters became into death, and many men died in the waters because the waters became bitter. You may be seated. So we spoke about the first last Sunday. So now let's pick about the second one. What happened when John saw the second angel sounded the trumpet? Here was the first. So let's go to the second. What did he see? He saw that the third part of all the animals of the life at sea would go extinct. And this picture was not made was not made on Photoshop. It was something that we made up. This is happening. If you see it on the news, what is happening right now in Brazil? Who's who is aware of what is going on in Brazil on the beaches? In Brazil, one of the beaches in Brazil. Does anybody know? The adults also can help with the intermediate and the lessons they may not have access. The oil, right? Yes, there was an oil spill in the beaches in Brazil right now. It's very sad to see this. The church is not pleased with this. Oh, how wonderful it is. More fish died. Oh, how wonderful. No, we're not pleased with this. this. Those were all creations from God. But why are those things happening? And why are we saying that the trumpet echoed? Because the Lord, the Lord, sent this as a sign so that when those things will take place, we need to be paying attention to what? To the sound of the trumpet. Why do we need to be paying attention to the sound of the trumpet? Because the return of the Lord is coming close. So you know what we sh we can compare it to the trumpets. Remember when the people of Israel was in Egypt? You no, know, the plagues, remember the plagues? 
that was a warning for the people because they were going to what what they're going to do they're going to Egypt they're going to live there forever no it was the departure those plagues they preceded their departure from Egypt in the same way the trumpets are so does anybody want to remember about any other tragedy tra tragedy that happened with the animals at sea this one is very recent from Brazil but there were many others even and then we we find out about something that happened at sea more fish are dying and another thing men generally speaking they're fishing a lot more fishing grew more people want to make money of course we want to survive and people take their survival out of uh, fishing by uh, man greed man wants to sell more and many times not even for them to eat they want to find exotic fish in order to sell and not to make money so there are many ways in which we see where it is in fact causing the reduction of the population at sea but uh, do the children understand what is the third part of something what is the third part so this is not going to be exactly the third part because I don't have nine uh, uh, characters here so imagine that this is the entire sea so if we speak about the third part this one is over uh, let's suppose that more or less this is is this complete no it's not complete and that's what is happening with the whole world is no longer complete there are fish there are species that no longer exist isn't it true and because of this uh, I want to say it again are we pleased with this no but this causes us to pay attention hey John saw this happening the Lord showed to him and in fact you know that this was hap do you think that this was happening when John was alive no the trumpet was not sounding when John was alive it is sounding now right so that was the second trumpet so let's go to the third trumpet and the third part of the creatures that were had life at sea so look there the penguins look at the quantity of garbage at sea when you go to the beach have you seen the sea the ocean completely clean with without any garbage I don't I, every time I go to the beach even if it is the uh, uh, bottle cap or it's a plastic there's always some garbage in the, at the beach so the quantity is, is reducing so now I ask you has the second trumpet sounded or is still to be sounded has it sounded yes or no Yes, of course, it sounded, right? And this all happening, it is because it already happened. And then it stopped sounding. It sounded once and it stopped sounding. No, it continues echoing. Uh, do, we, do we hear a sound? No. We need to be pay attention to the, what is happening uh, all over the world. The faithful servants are paying attention to those signs. Do you think that the world understand that this is a warning from of the return of the Lord? No, the world doesn't understand. The world is concerned with what? Oh, we need to be green. Uh, this is a green wave. No, straws are no longer made out of plastic. Now they are made out of paper. When you go to a restaurant, this this straw is horrible. It, dissolves on your hands oh, well, let's, let's go, let's be green because we need to save the planet because otherwise the straw will end up at sea of course we, we need to take care of our planet of course, we still live here but do you think that doing all of those things, do you think that the second trumpet is going to stop sounding? no, no because this is prophetic it will continue so let's go the third trumpet what happened with the third trumpet the third trumpet you read there on the passage in revelations that a star what was the name of the star who remembers absinto what is the absinto it's a, a different word the ones on the back there somebody said that's what it is an adolescent said it's bitter 
And so the waters of the rivers today do the thing that you can go to any river and drink off of the river. Is it, do you think is a good idea to drink water off the river? Of course not, because the waters from the rivers, in the same way as the waters from the oceans, they are polluted. And the, regarding the ocean, I remember one thing: in the Deerfield Beach, how many times don't we hear about the red tide that we hear that we cannot even get into the water because then we get sick? Same thing with those rivers. If we drink from the water of those rivers, you know what is going to happen? We're going to be very healthy, no? Of course not. Look what I brought you to see. What is the water that's bitter? But you cannot taste it. Do you think that anyone would drink of this water? No, I don't think so. Now imagine that the rivers that were once all clean, anyone could go. In the Bible, you see how many times we see the word say that the, the violence of David would go to the river, they would bathe. But you cannot do this today. If you, you need to buy a filter in order to put on the refrigerator or, or buy, buy bottled water. Otherwise, we would be drinking this. Water like this. How wonderful. Filled with things here. And once again, I would like to say, are we happy with this? Are we happy that God's creation is happening this to it? We're not happy because, but once again, this is an alert for what? That Jesus is, Jesus, Jesus will return. Amen. So we need to be paying attention because, because the third trumpet has already sounded and continues to sound together with the first, second, and the third. They continue to echo. And the third part of the waters became into bitterness, and many men died because the water became bitter. So what happened with the third part of the animal? And see, this, the third part on the water also happened. You now understand what is the third part, right? So look there, how wonderful it is for you to go to a river and, and pick up uh, fresh water and drink. But do you think that this water here, would you do this with the water here on the on the right side? Oh, I'm very thirsty. This is water? Of course not. The water is polluted, filled with garbage. So, now I ask you, has the third trumpet sounded? Oh, you're still waiting for it to sound. Yes or no? Yes, the third trumpet has sounded. Yes, it has sounded. This, this sounds are being fulfilled. So now, as I said, the faithful church is seeing those things happening, and the faithful church remembers this. Hey, yes, John left everything written down in the book of Revelation. And yes, the signs are being fulfilled. But the world, the th uh, uh, I'm going to ask again, the world is understanding this as trumpet, as the sign of the return of Jesus? No, they don't understand. What causes to discern it? What is discern is to understand that this is a sign of the return of Jesus. What do we need to have in our hearts in order to understand that this is a sign of the return of Jesus? You just need to come here and hear me talking about it. If there is not a, a person convincing of this, who convinces us? Is the Holy Spirit, Jesus, through His uh, Holy Spirit, convinces us. So it's now time for us to begin to ask more and more of the Holy Spirit. Our lamps. What is our lamp? Lamp is, is speaks of our hearts. So if our hearts is not filled with the Holy Spirit, every day, when those things continue to happen, it's already happening. But they, as they continue to happen, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're gonna look and th say, "Oh, this is not another force that is is on fire in Brazil." A, a while ago, it happened in Brazil. Everything is Brazil. I'm only giving an example about Brazil. Sorry. But if we don't have the Holy Spirit in our hearts, we're going to look at those facts that are happening all over the world. And we begin to act like the world. Oh, look. People are not taking care of the planet. And that's what is happening to the planet. We should not fall into this trap. Especially the adolescents. They have so many... There are so many activists that I don't know if you 
heard about then a graduate, a, a, a girl from Switzerland that's saying that we are take, you are destroying the planet. Men may don't man be destroying the planet, maybe, but the one who is responsible. Do you think that man is responsible for it? No, this has already been prophesized, independent on man wanting or not wanting. So don't pay attention to, don't allow the things that are in the media to enter your heart and cause you to doubt what the Lord has already left on this word. So if it is not through the Holy Spirit, nobody will convince you. So now it's time for you to ask more and more the Holy Spirit to enter into our heart. Because our heart, as I said, is the lamp. A lamp filled, ready to go to heaven. If the lamp is empty, do you think you are going to go to heaven? No, we are going to be left here. So we need to be, have our ears open and pay attention to the sound of the trumpets because it's fourth, which is going to be the next class. You are going to know what, what's going to happen with the trumpet. So now the question for the children to have the, the last sentence. Which trumpets that sound that causing the reduction of the... Uh, life on, at sea and causing the waters to go bitter. Which one was the first, second or third or fifth trumpet? It was the third trumpet. And which one else? And the second. Not the fourth. So here's the answer. The second and the third trumpet, they both sounded. So Amen. So this word, I know that we hear a lot People saying the pastors have preached about the trumpets, but if the Holy Spirit has revealed that He wanted us to be bringing this mess, special message on the month of October, the Holy Spirit knows all things. He knows why, especially for this month, which is a month all geared towards the dedication, a month of evangelization, where the two intermediary and the lessons were evangelized. The Lord chose this moment for us to speak about this again. But we always need to speak about this because the church needs to be attention. We cannot allow the sign to be something that uh, always happened. All it will always happen. They always kill uh, fish and over fish, and they destroy trees, and something that always happened. No, my, my friend, we need to be always pay attention to this because the Holy Spirit is the one who's alerting our lives for what. It's about to happen, which is the fourth trumpet, which is going to happen in the fourth class. Amen. Let's stand up.
We're going to have a glorification of the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise your name. Because your people is a happy people. We praise your name, Lord. Because you are in our midst. Blessed be your name, Lord. We pray to you. In the name of Jesus. The church may be seated. We're going to sing a song and after the praise, the children may receive the class uh, upstairs. Via Santete da Escola Bíblica Dominical, as crianças podem ir para a classe.
Cristão Maranata está presente em nações de todos os continentes do planeta. Maranata is present in continents all over the world. Church from every America, Europe, Africa, Asia, and Oceania. They are connected by the same doctrine in the direction of the Holy Spirit of God, united by the living word. Brethren from every part of the world participate in the same service jointly, in the same body, in the same spirit. Through the system of transmission, the members of the Maranatha Christian Church all over the planet deliver a moment of unity and fellowship as they leave the Hebrews and the departure to the Egypt and the disciples with the Lord Jesus before his death in the cross of Calvary. People from every part of the world have been reached by the go eternal gospel and by the mes message of their soon return to the Lord Jesus. We greet every, every church that connected with us this morning. And also all the, the brethren in Brazil and abroad, everywhere, that are with us, connected. We greet with the peace of the Lord Jesus. The Sunday School, the Sunday school is being broadcast from uh, Manaí of Domingos Martins. We're on the uh, third period and beginners class. And this Sunday school is also being watched in North America, in South America, and many countries abroad following this Sunday school. And we are informing the brethren about the events that are taking place in, on those days. There is also a seminar on the uh, east of Europe uh, with the pastor from the Presbytery, and there were Sunday schools there. In the same way as is, is done in Brazil, is, is done there in the seat of Samar in Russia. And also, they, there was a seminar on the city of Takete in Uzbekistan. You can show on the map. There was also a seminar in Samarkand in, in Uzbek, Uzbekistan. And abroad, we have, we are highlighting um, the appointment of six, uh, six new deacons in that region. That's been in the Lord. We have need of deacons, and the Lord has uh, blessed us with new deacons there. And the assistance of the church in Central America, in Aguadus and Panama, to the brethren that are watching there, the giving assistance to those churches there. In the city of Medellin, in Colombia, and Lima, in Peru, those there, and also in South America. And also there is a seminar in Brazil, and they are participating with us, brethren from many, of many cities in Brazil. Amongst them, brothers from Bagu and Rio de Janeiro, they are following with us. And also in Marinho Vidreira, in the city of Nit Niterói, in the state of Rio de Janeiro. And also in Juí, in Rio Grande do Sul, there is a seminar that took place in the church, local church there, in the city of Juí, in Rio Grande do Sul. And also a seminar for 
workers and in the city of Vitoria, in Santo Antonio, in Pernambuco, near Recife, in the city of Carisica, they consecrated a, yet a new church in the borough of Siba. For those who think that there are too many churches in the city of Victoria, there is another one that has been just consecrated. There is room for more one, more churches. In Carisica also, there was a new project. That was, it's called um, uh, Student in, in the regional mountain. In Bahia, there was another vigil with the youth. There is a work of evangelization in the city of Pacaraí, in Roraima, in the border with Venezuela. There was an evangelization inside of the indigenous community there. So the brethren uh, being assisted there. They also had an evangelization in Cacual, in Rondonia. Also in the city of Palmares, in Pernambuco, all in Brazil. Also in the south region of Rio de Janeiro. And also in Niterói, and in, also in the state of Rio de Janeiro. There was a work, a special work of evangelization in the tribe Genipal at the shores of the river Solimões in the city of Tefé in, in the Amazon state. There was a baptism in the city of Joma Levade in Minas Gerais, and also in the city of Porto Alegre in the Rio Grande do Sul, in the city of Sombrio in Santa Catarina, all in Brazil. And we want to uh, greet the brethren from the church. Uh, Maranatha and the in Vitoria there are have gathered to study the topics about the Sunday school. And I'd like to highlight also the training of instruction that is called is done by the the, the ones that fight uh, forest fires and the preservation of nature and, and security of Manaí and the response and uh, bris uh, environmental responsibility of the Maranatha Church. And so those are a few of the events that are taking place and there are many others and the brethren can follow in Radio Manaim, all of them, and also follow what the Lord has brought His people to work on this time as gratitude to the Lord. Now beginning this morning, our Sunday School, Pastor Jeduti is going to give the introductory word. Well, my brethren, peace of the Lord. We're back, right? Our Sunday school has uh, followed a series of prophetic sequences. A message is delivered, is the world of the pastor and the ushers to nourish the church with messages, but especially at this hour. The message is of evangelization. Evangelization is a word that lots of people use, even the ones who are not evangelical. So evangelization is something that anything can be about evangelization. But evangelization for us has a different meaning. It's to say where we came from, where we are, and where we're going to. That's what it is. And situate the position of each one regarding a project of eternity. So, and and this, we have had a concern of bringing the church to an understanding, a, a deep understanding of the understanding of the Word of God. And the topic today is a sequence. We're bringing those topics, which is the Holy Spirit, which is determining, not something that is aleatory. No. It's nothing random. There is a sequence that has been determined by the Lord. We have meetings every Wednesday in the presbytery, and there, from there, comes the instructions from the Lord. And those are instructions that cannot be um, um, disregarded. They need to be followed. So, what is the topic that we are interested with at this moment? We are. We have the responsibility to understand the role of the church, specifically of the Maratha Christian Church, and whoever else they want to say what needs to be said at this hour. That the time of the church is coming to its to an end. 
It's not to cause you to be afraid. No, Jesus is coming. You're going to be left. That's not the idea. Everybody chooses their own destination. It's, it's, it's worthless for you to be afraid and go into religion because you're afraid because God is coming and this kind of, kind of conversation that is not appropriate for us. We know what we want. We know where we are and where, where we are going. That's what is important. So now there's a sequence. At this time now, it's been determined by the Lord that this period, which is a period in which we are living of celebration of, of the 50 years of the Maranatha Church with this name, and this name is not in the name of another religion, it's a biblical name that at the bottom of it all is a warning. And what is the warning that the Lord wants to give to the world? That Jesus is coming. And what is the warning that is in the book of Revelations, one which was the letter, last letter that we studied about? What was the warning on, of the last letter with regarding to return of the Lord Jesus? What was? I am at the door and I knock. So pay attention, we are before a door, but there is a, a reversal here. When Jesus is saying that he's at the door, when the text is speaking, he is at the door of your heart. But the door here, which is Jesus now, in another aspect, the door who is Jesus, the door that is opening up to eternity. So one thing is, is his appeal at this moment. God's call at this moment is the call of the church. The warning of the church at this moment is this, that Jesus is at the doors. And you need to open up your door, the door of your heart. So the proclamation is that he is at the doors. So now it's time. The church has already went through 2,000 years, and now everything will be fulfilled in God's time. will be tomorrow. So what does the text say there? In Luke, it says the following. In the text from another gospel, it says, in the first vigil, or the second or third vigil. No. In Luke, it says, it doesn't speak about the first vigil. It already starts on the second and third. Or does it come in the third? The second is between 6 and 9 p.m. The first one from 3 to 6. The second is from 6 to 9 p.m. Actually, the first is from 6 to 9. I'm sorry. So the first vigil is from 6 to 9. The second vigil is from 9 to 12 p.m. 12, to midnight. The third vigil is going to the new day will start. So where are we? Are we on the first vigil? So that's now that's the question I asked the brethren here. Are we on the first vigil from six to nine? No. Why? Because the day that is scheduled, time is being scheduled, whether it is at nine, it is is finishing the afternoon and it's beginning the evening. So when we are from nine to midnight, we have already entered into a new phase, a new period. And this period is the period of that precedes the midnight. And midnight, prophetically speaking, is when the groom will be coming from that wedding that is in the parable of the virgins. So he comes at midnight, and so there is a shout. Now, what is a shout? It's a shout that is, is when at this hour of the night. And that's what we need to study. That's what this shout that we need to, to make. So now, let's go to the questions. Pastor Alexandre is a nice one. So that detail. That question needs to be answered quickly because the questions are very easy. Firstly, he's going to give the text so then so that the group may begin to read, right? 
So uh, let's answer the refuse question. Oh, they the, the already answered. Oh, that one is easy. So now, so if you want, I don't want to bother you. But so if they already answered the question, that's that's all right. So now examining the content of the parable in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter twenty-five, from one to thirteen, which was exposed, explained by Jesus to his disciples, mentioned the main objective the content of this text there. Read Matthew 25 from 1 to 13. I would read the, the last verse also, so not to delay. What was? What was the objective, the main objective of this parable? That Jesus uttered to his disciples. So it's just one word. What was the word? It's already answered. That was easy, right? It was in what verse? In what verse? Verse 13. Or Matthew. So here it is. We're beginning through the end. So now let's go to the other questions. So let's go back here to the text that they read that they didn't pay attention to. So what was the objective? So here's the answer that was here. So let's go. Vigilance. Be you need to be vigilant because watch therefore for you you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So the message was to warn that Jesus to be vigilant. So now let's go to the parable. Let's go. So the second question. How many were the virgins that went to meet with the groom? How many? Ten. Very well. But some here answer, but the Brazil and the world must be answering as well. The question is very simple. So the text, ten, the the message speaks about ten virgins that took their lamps and went to meet with the groom. Very well. So now the third question: Which ones were the demands for the guests to participate on the feast? Now that's the one I want to answer. Which ones were the Demands. So put the microphone in your mouth there. Where is the man with the microphone? There, there it is. Any person can raise their hand and let's go it quickly. The time. No one. No one has answered. It's not possible. It is in the Bible. <laughs> it's some verse. At least some verse one. There are two answers there. Which one? So now it's too easy. Come on. Which ones were the demands? Which ones were the demands in order for you to participate on the feast? First, no, no, only one. There, there are a trio that is answered the questions. No. What is the microphone? Oh, you need to fix up your glasses. Oh, come on. Answer quickly. <laughs> Let, let's go. But the prudence brought their oil in their vessels. I understood that was full uh, lamp. So she spoke about something else. She spoke about the the oil and the field lamp. What was this that they needed to have? The gas they needed to be prepared. Is it? With the characteristic of the people that was going were going to be a part, was it having a lamp filled with oil or lit? She almost got it right. Well, so let's continue. She, firstly, they were virgins. They were virgins. They needed to be virgin. So, the bride, Jesus' bride, is virgin. Is a virgin. It's only for the groom, and that's it. And then she, then they become his husband. That's it. 
So that's when you see religion. There are many brides, but Jesus, there is only one. Is there is a church? Has it been understood? Firstly, had to be a virgin. She was invited. Yes, the ones who were prepared for that day. In the past, the owner of the house would invite people for the wedding with the groom. Not, not, not with the bride, but the groom. The people came from afar because ev evidently the pop population lived in far places. So society, so the family would spread when they had an invitation. They, they, it was not in the city or in the towns where they lived. But generally speaking, they brought people from afar that stayed in their house. To people would go and stay in their house. So the feast was a feast. There was seven days feast before the wedding. So they waited there. They were excited, waiting for the groom that could arrive at any moment. So now I'm going to ask you a question. Just, I'm sorry. At what time would this room arrive? At what time? On the second, at the end of the second vigil. So this room, why is it saying that it was midnight? Because midnight is related to what is with the prophetic time that is measured in the history of man. In the morning, early dawn, in the born of the day, at noon, afternoon, for the afternoon, and night and midnight. So this is a sequence of the time in which we live. And also Jesus uses this as a sequence, a prophetic sequence, for the time in which the door will be closed when he will receive this church. So let's continue. So then, what we are understanding here at midnight, at this time, the groom will arrive. And why now is the groom coming at midnight? What is the reason? So, so now, who understand, knows why? Raise your hand quickly. Why is the reason why Jesus establishes that, which is biblical, which is prophetic, for the night? They almost guessed it. There are a lot of smart people here. It's possible that you may not. It's impossible that you may not be able to answer. No one. So can I answer? So I'm going to wait a little bit here. <laughs> so that's what it is. Let me answer. The lamp needed to be lit because the groom was going to come at midnight. The church that will depart needs to have lit lamps and it is the light or or revelation so the bible is here is the word is the letter but the revelation is inside of it but it's worthless for you to preach about the bible and do biblical studies if you didn't, didn't understand this or you need to enter and understand revelation so that's why He's coming at midnight because it was the darkest night. And is it is when the lamp when it's lit lights up the most. The brightness of the lamp is on the time when you come. If it is during the day, you can light up the lamp, it's not going to cause any effect. But when it's midnight, when you light up your lamp, it is completely different. So at this time of the night, the church needs to have its lamp lit. Very well. So let's continue. There are so many questions. So let's continue. Pastor Lushan. So here's the answer here. So they need to be virgins and the lamps and the oil. So need to have lit lamps. But they needed to have a lamp, of course, you know, to have it lit. And what else? What was the other requirement? Having the oil. So the, those were the three things. Being a virgin, having a lamp, having it lit. Everybody's going to have If Jesus comes, very well. First, you need to be called. If you're not called, because the 
honor the feast is the one who invited. What does the Bible say? Many are invited, but few are chosen. But for this call, you need to have those three things. You need to understand clearly a virgin having to be a church that only has one groom. If you have two, you have three, then is uh, a choice of the human, but then it's not the right bride. So that's the problem. So if you don't have a revelation, where are you going? You go to the darkness. Do you understand? So understand how a parable that everybody's reading all the time. Oh, I know the Bible. I know everything. They don't know what what to preach. They preach about parable. But there's one thing the church needs to understand that the entire project that is in the Word, if it is not prophetic, it's just letter. And what does the Bible say about letter? The letter, the letter kills. So it's difficult, isn't it? It is biblical. It is in every Bible. Oh, but I'm studying, I'm reading. Oh, you can read. There's nothing wrong with that. You're supposed to read. So now let's continue. So now, let's go to the next question. How many of them slumbered and slept? It explains the prophetic act. All of them. So, all of them. All of them. They are all in the same boat. They have all the same problem. They are all slumbered and slept. We who are the church also slumbered and slept. Look at the situation. Now I want you to explain why, how you can discern this. So raise your hand. There is no one to discern this. They all slumbered and slept. The, the man with our glasses, the, the man with glasses smart. <laughs> <laughs> Very quickly. Then they get a microphone and throw the microphone <laughs> to the person that has to answer. So no, so no, answer the question. But whom they all slumbered and slept because that's not the question they asked. How many slumbered and slept? Now explain. That it's a midnight, it comes a period in which the trials come to people, and generally the servants of the Lord feel tired. And the walk and the trial that are involved, sometimes you get tired, but we do not sleep spiritually. But the Bible says that they all slept, but when we hear the voice of the Lord, we get up and go to the meeting of the Lord because. We're not sleeping. No, 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 no. Very well. The explanation is good. But look at this. The other also slept. And they also got up. You said that we got up. We, who? <laughs> look, let's put everything in proper place. What he said about the question, is it right? Yes or no? No, it's not. <laughs> it's not even half right. <laughs> Look at this, the church. It said uh, charcoal. She's just a little piece, like my my daughter. Can give me a, a pencil, and she got me a, a tiny pencil. So uh, she collected pencils, and now they're collecting charcoals. <laughs> I'm gonna have to write my fingers here. So the story of the church is here. Here's the faithful church is here. So this church is going through a struggle in a battle here. They they get right, they get wrong. That's something that happens because we are humans. But in fact, at this moment, came a revival. Everybody knows that. The revival of the 18th century. Because why did the 18th century revival came? Because the Holy Spirit prepared the church for the return of Jesus. So now what is the problem of, of that time? Christianity was being manifested through two segments. The first was of a man, was a philosophy. This is not the Catholic Church. Observe. I'm not 
speaking about the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church was there, it continued in the same way it always lived. With dogma, they had no commitment. Evidently, with what the, the Protestant Church said that needed to happen. So they came to a certain point. So when it came to this time here, the Holy Spirit came upon the world at that time. So then two segments that represented Christianity at the time, which was philosophy and Fausto. So what was understood? God expressed through the philosophers of Kennedy or Oxford and Paris, you know, all the philosophers and theologians. And now the other manifestation was through Fausto. So the great cathedral, because they believe the following, that God, since he is almighty, everything that we do, we put gold in it. So gold on the, on the building. So man began to understand that God was going to manifest through Fausto to great cathedrals, a lot of gold, and a lot of precious stuff. So then you can judge this as a, as a special zoo. We're going to give the best to the Lord, but now the poor could not enter there into the big temples. So the presence of the Lord stopped being, it began to be some liturgy. So that's why the gospel and the service needs to be an, uh, something that comes out of your heart. Oh no, you fix up your tie, because if I didn't adjust my tie, or if it came dressed up in a bold way, I'm not criticizing one, anyone. Oh, oh, if God is in my life, no, I'm going to need to dress up the place because God is in my life. No, that's not what it is. I'm going to face in God didn't add nothing to do with what they thought at that time. So when the Holy Spirit came, came to define, to prepare the word for the time in which we're living today. So now you ask, this world, so now the question that I asked the brother there, the young, the youth there, this world was awoken. How many? So now you divide between here, the church, here. The church is going to go to heaven, the faithful church and the unfaithful. So they all have been called. The chosen were chosen were the faithful, the virgins. They were both virgins. They all been called. They had the comments. And I'm gonna even ask a question. I'm going to segue here. The patch I'm going to make here. There in Luke, the Gospel of Luke, on chapter twelve, verse one. We're going to see determination for this moment. What was the verse that was said last Sunday? It also speaks about about being vigilant. So what does it say? Let your waist be girded and your lamps burning. Verse 35, I'm sorry. Let your waist be girded and your lamps burning. So now I ask the virgins, are they all, did they all have their ways girded? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Why is it, did they answer that? Yes. Why? Was, wasn't it a requirement of the feast? If you, and the feast, you, but you don't have a revelation. No, no, no. This is revelation. Because they all had the same garment of salvation. The garment of salvation is fundamental. You can only enter in the feast in the past if you had, if you were properly dressed. And who gave the dress is the owner of the feast. He was the one who gave the garments for the prepar preparation for the wedding and prepared the food. So now you have what? If you're a good person, or you're, good, you're a good person, so now you go to heaven? No. You have been called because God gave you a garment of salvation. That's what it is called a new birth. So garments of salvation. So the ones who were outside didn't have, so they didn't enter into the feast. 
But this group was awaiting the feast. So this is a church. It's a, it's all mixed, the faithful and unfaithful, they were both called, but they were not chosen. So the choice is not in function of the garment of, of salvation, because they all received. So then you, you receive garment salvation. Oh, the other one didn't receive. Oh, I also received. But are you faithful? So now, what is the secret of the verse that I mentioned in Luke regarding the parable? What was the difference? The lamps burning. So the garments you need to have, but most importantly, the revealed word. If you don't have it, you're not going anywhere. You don't know, understand the mystery. Salvation is a mystery. They need to be understood. And the Holy Spirit is the one who does it. So it's not religion that does it. It's the Holy Spirit. It's not a uh, glass of water. It's not your effort. It's not a uh, stone from the Jordan River or oil from the Mount of Olives. It's not an object that does it. Do the brethren understand? What I'm showing to the church at this moment is what is our concern? Is to show the need of being all of us inside of uh, the standards that are required, that, that were required for this time. So now I ask you, had they all slept? But this one's here, the faithful, they heard the voice, and this one also heard. The unfaithful also heard. They, they, they hear it. You know why? Because the signs are out there for anyone who wants. You point out the spirit was not for the Manta church or for the other church. No, it was it was for everyone, for whoever wants. You understand, my brethren? But now, the Lord God does not require from us anything that He is not given to us from Him. So the requirement is regarding what He has already given us. So now, they all slumbered and slept. But the faithful church, when the warning, the when the shout was said, what is the shout that is being said? That is being made. The faithful, no, it's not the church that is, is giving the shout. It's the Holy Spirit in the entire world. The, the trumpets, the signs are out there. The world is going through this, the situation, the moral situation, and physical. The world can see this, but we cannot. Uh, we cannot uh, misrepresent what is happening in the world. It's all the spirit is. The enemy is out there, commanding the religion and the world out there. But the church, when the church hears, so to hear is not to hear at that moment. Is to hear is is a condition for the call. is a situation in which man is to be, because salvation is not, is an action. I'm saved, is action and is a process. So in an action, God calls you. The process, like the Jesus, God chooses you. And the process, God guides you. And who, who guides in the process? The Holy Spirit. If there's no Holy Spirit, so now it's a good religion. But this good religion says the following. Oh, you cannot eat um, pork, meat. Oh, you cannot do this uh, or that. What's well, the religion? So then you do everything that the religion tells you. But what the Holy Spirit dictated in the first day is, is over. The experience of living with God is over. Why? Because you didn't allow because the Holy Spirit that touched you on that day would not allow you. You're not, you didn't allow those people to help you on the walk. So you're not worried about following the instructions from the Lord and continue the project of salvation. What are we doing? Let's go back here. We are going back here to say to the brethren that we have a commitment. The commitment is with us, is to understand that the moment is the moment of the sounding 
What was that? Don't bother me. <laughs> you were the one who sent me the paper. It's something else. It has nothing to do with... Uh, it's an annoying one. So let's continue. We're coming to this moment because of our responsibility. The responsibility... Oh, the responsibility of the pastor here. Pastor Alexander, another one here. No, it's not a responsibility. The responsibility belongs to all of us. To your father, mother, your neighbor. What does the Bible say? You cannot fight with anyone. You cannot say to your neighbor, oh, your religion is worthless. No, you cannot say that. But, but there is a need. You need to seek the Lord at this hour. So you need to have your lamp lit. But in order for you to have the lamp lit, you need to have oil. So I'm going to ask a question. Five were prudent. They were wise. So the church of the last days. So there is a gospel that is dead out there. But now you need to rise up and say, now is not time for this. Because the groom is at the door. There's no time for us to waste. They all slumbered. They all slumbered. But the ones, but a few had a reservoir. So the groom was there. They all, they had all ready for the lamps to remain lit because at midnight the, the groom was going to arrive. At the time, the, in the illustration of the wedding, the groom was going to come at the last hour of the day, was the darkest hour. And the beauty is on the wedding was that the guests they had to have the garments, they also had to have the lamp that uh, and the, the owner of the feast he he would give the lamps but the, each person had to bring oil. My brethren, they bought oil. Buying the oil is the hardest because it is our dedication. What we bring to our spiritual life is not without prayer, it's not without seeking the Lord that you're gonna have oil. Oh no. The oil, in order for the lamp to be filled it's you the one who seeks the oil. It's not a gift that you can't get from anyone. Oh, I'm going to give oil from, from you. No, you give me a little bit of oil. No. Give me of your oil. The foolish virgin said. The five virgins that were not chosen. Oh, the ones who had said, no. No, we are not supposed to share our oil. Salvation is individual. It's personal. So I had a brother here in Juiz de Fora, here in Brazil. We were preaching about the lamps. There are a few pastors from Juiz de Fora. He was saying, my brother, what it is to have a lack of revelation, observe. The version that were foolish asked the wife for the prudence and they didn't give. If it was here with Brother Manuel, they would share the oil. That was the preaching in Jesus of Water. You see what it is, lack of what you're supposed to say. Oh, they lack the love. Oh, oh the brother has no revelation at all. <laughs> they lack the love. So Brother Manuel is giving orders, is preaching all over the place with, with those uh, quote unquote revelations so at what time would the groom arrive and what was the shout at what time would the groom come at midnight and what was the shout very well so here comes the groom my brother that's what we need to do right now we show the people that we need to do this if we don't do this who else will do it who else will do it the ones who are around us are saying that we're not well, and this is the God that is sleeping here, slumbering. Is this the God that is going to do this? We're good ones because we're going to do it. So the goodness is personified here. Is that true? No. We're playing our role here. We're not better than anyone else. I want to say one thing. We are understanding 
uh, people understand that they, because they are on the benches of the church, they are saved. They are missing the people that are not being saved because of this. We have a couple of testimonies that we heard here. A brother sought me. I don't know if the testimony was shared this morning. The brother from campus. Okay. Uh, the individual was imprisoned and <coughs> was taken to the, the police department. He had made a mistake. He was a soldier and he used to attend church and learned a bunch of stuff about the Bible. He went to, to get a driver's license and when he got there and they said, oh man, you are you're, you're arrested. And went to prison and stayed three months there. When, when he was there, there was a group that likes to uh, a gang that controls the prison. And there they said, look, you look like a pastor. You're going to preach. You're going to preach for us here. The, the head of the gang there inside the prison. And he said, he began to preach. You know what? He began to preach about revelations. He had learned this and spent three months preaching about revelation. And the, the chief of the gang said, at the moment the service of our pastor here, <laughs> no one can speak and they're going to smoke and they're going to say anything. So he spent three months in prison and left their church <laughs> waiting for the moment of the rapture. <laughs> a few days ago I received a, a, an information, a communique from a friend He's in the community and, and, uh, and uh, he sent a message there is a the man said that he's going to return. He entered with a gang of people all armed my brethren, there's a world that wants to hear. There's a world that is afflicted. Things are happening around you and you cannot understand. You see this? Oh, Jesus is returning. No, that's not nothing to do with this. Do not put fear on people. People cannot live off of this. People do not understand. That, uh, they cannot accept the gospel based on fear. We need to explain the reasons of our faith with moderation, without asking charging people about anything. Nobody's forced to do anything. God created men with free will, but you're not supposed but you're supposed to say what you need to say. So now what is the role of the church at this hour? Why are we all involved with a message that needs to be delivered? If we spend now another life and we not do not deliver this message, who is going to charge us. We are going to charge ourselves because Jesus returning. It is a message, was a message that has been forgotten. And it, uh, uh, at a certain uh, point is understandable. But now we are at the door. The door will be closed. Now I'm going to ask a question now. The last question, right? It's not even here. We're going to leave this one behind. The last question I'm going to ask you. The ones, the virgins who stayed behind, what did they do? What was the action of the ones who were left behind? They had the garment, they had everything, they had the lamp, but they didn't have the oil or the fire. What? They shouted, open up for us, Lord. Remember, there is a people. They, they are people that think that God is their hostage. They, they think that they have a God that, and that they can give orders to. If Jesus comes here, they take God to some other place and they remove the Holy Spirit and they remove everything from the for their religion. People understand this, and they think that God is their hostage, a hostage of their own desire. Oh, what is their desire? To become rich, to become important, to become famous we need to pay attention to this there are many things that happen we can we will need uh, some of the topic for for next week it's already time it's 57 minutes Alexander, 
there, there's a the clock here. I'm afraid I'm not afraid of the clock run. They also need to reproduce and uh, transmit the the Sunday school. There is so much topic to speak about. We can bring this school to a close. Amen. The pastor and the church they have a little more time, right? Until the 24th, we have the pastor will have a lot of time. What is the concern of the Lord Jesus with regards to the church that is, has been mentioned in the parable? What is the concern of the Lord Jesus for the church at this time? It's just one word. What is the word? To be vigilant. To be vigilant. Amen. What is the preparation? What are the elements that are required in order to enter into the feast? Which ones? Garments of salvation? You're going to see a parable where a man enters with the, the, the garments of salvation. He was going to be, he went, we were thrown out. The second one is to have the lamp lit. No, we have to have oil. And then, the garments of salvation and the lamp lit. You need, you need to have lamp and oil. So let, we're going to go slowly. Your pastor, right? Let's go slowly first. So no, lamp lit. No, no, no. Evolution, everybody has, but you have oil. That's the problem. The, you know that they went back and they were not able to find oil to buy. What's midnight? And the, the owner of the feast was not there. It was the Holy Spirit. It was together to take the church. And midnight is not time for you to buy anything. So the church needs to be prepared for the shout of the midnight. And we have had it. Read, written, here comes the groom. We hear the shout, here comes the groom. Let us stand up. There's a data on this message that I speak about the the ten virgins. That the ten virgins, when they they wake up from the slumber and they wake up, the Bible said they all those virgins they got up. They all got up and they all prepared their lamps. But in the moment in which they were preparing the lamp, that's when they realized that they didn't have oil. But then, it, so then it was too late. That's the detail. It is interesting that the groom comes. We're going to wait for the groom to come. Get out towards, to meet the groom. And where did the brides, they met with the groom? Where was it? And the, on the way, of course. So interesting that they all knew the way. They all ten knew the way. Right, but the groom is coming. They knew where they needed to go in order to meet with him. They knew everything, right? But they were not prepared. You know? Sometimes you know everything, right? I know everything, but it's not important only to know everything. But it's important to be prepared. Amen. Let's hear a song. Children's song.
I'm going to stand up, I'm going to bring the service to an end. Lord, we praise you, we thank you, because at this moment you have given us to have fellowship with you, because once again, Lord, we have opened up our eyes and shown us and revealed the moment in which we are living. Lord, we praise you and glorify you, Lord, for you are concerned with us towards our lives. Praise be your name, Lord, because you prepared our church to live with you in eternity. Receive the service and duration because we refer to you in the holy name of Jesus. We now you say that wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. I'd like to remind the brethren of the need to point out and to place on the on the board there of the church your hour from Sunday night we're going to begin uh, a period of uh, prayer a non-stop prayer of 15 minutes those 15 minutes of prayer maybe is for the work of the Holy Spirit no it's for the work of the Holy Spirit in my life there's a moment in which we reserve to buy the oil we need to remember we need to buy the oil the oil we, we buy with prayer or fasting and dedication, evangelizing, speak of the Lord, inviting people. And that's what fills our, our vessel with oil in our hearts so that we ha may have reserve of oil at this last hour. So it is a need for the brand to be participating in this moment of 15 minutes of prayer. And tomorrow also we have a, a, a service in their homes. It's a moment for us to reserve, a moment to be with the Lord and with our family members. Amen. This weekend, once again, we're going to have this evangelization with children and the Sunday school at 10.30 in the morning. And we're going to invite the ones who can to come uh, and the ones from high school and from children's Sunday school to participate. And to all, I say the peace of the Lord. Pode dar uma lida aqui e ver se tem algum erro. 